This is a panel talk with Aaron Coblin and Chris Milk, who already talked on Sunday about the Johnny Cash project and a project we also commissioned here for DLD Arts um, called Exquisite Forest. And um, in the previous panel included questions about the role of art and technology for growth and um, I think something was mentioned about or originality and authentic, what counts original. So this talk now is about the creative potential on the web, um, online collaboration, online in online environments and um, interactive environments. Um, I think what's interesting about this collaboration is that it's an interdisciplinary collaboration as it happens very often with arts at DLD in the past, or happened very often uh, with Hans Ulrich Oberst, always advocating the interdisciplinary. So, um, Aaron is a data artist or um, an artist understanding data information, and Chris is a filmmaker. And I think that makes a very inter interesting combination when it comes to space and interaction with space. Maybe a very quick intro to you guys. Um, Aaron, okay. born in Los Angeles, is um, an American uh, digital media artist best known for his innovative use of data and visualization and crowdsourcing. So we hear something about how to use existing technology in the web uh, and uh, crowdsourcing processes. And uh, Chris is an American uh, music uh, video director and photographer, um, uh, directed videos for Kane West, U2, Green Day, Kurt Love, Audio Slave, Modest Mouse, and Arcade Fire. So I guess that's the intro. Let's see what you have to say. Well, thanks, Johannes. Pleasure. Uh so uh, we're a little bit of a unique combination. Um, as was mentioned, Chris is a filmmaker, and I'm a bit of a art, fine arts major slash data nerd. Uh, so we're just going to give you a bit of a brief background on each of us, and then we're going to talk about some of the projects that we've done together, uh, and finally talk about uh, uh, the project we've presented here. So very quickly, uh, my background uh, is I started off in computer science, and I guess I, I fit Ben Horowitz's uh, category as a dropout. I, I skipped computer science and decided I want to go towards fine art. Um, I began studying fine art and eventually studied in a program called Design Media Arts, which is basically writing software for art making practice. Um, I'm going to quickly show you a few of the different projects that I've, create, uh, I've used software to create art projects with. Um, this first project is going back uh, a number of years to 2005. It's a visualization of air traffic over North America. So what you see is a data visualization of all the airplanes over North America as people move. Um, uh, you see basically the daily ebb and flow, and it's one thing to say there's hundreds of thousands of airplanes being chartered by the FAA, but if you see this pattern, you kind of get a sense for the rhythm in life, and it can actually read into other stories as well. Uh, this is a, the, a different type of uh, data. This is bringing it into the physical environment. This is a, a project I worked on with Nick Hoffermoss and Dan Goods called the eCloud. So in San Jose International Airport, there's a large sculpture which is con containing privacy glass panels. So electric current turns the panels on and off, and it basically simulates it through abstract patterns traveling to different locations. So here you see the display, and it's showing you it's now traveling to Kathmandu. And there's light rain in Kathmandu, so you'll see light rain visualized. And it, it uses parameters like wind direction, wind speed, humidity, uh, cloud coverage, and it ends up simulating through these patterns. It's kind of a tricky place to play in an airport. We wanted to make something ambient uh, and something that wasn't adding more pain to the, to the experience. Um, Another project I worked on was a, a music video for Radiohead with director James Frost. We basically used laser scanners to collect laser scanners and structured light scanners to collect footage of the band uh, in a number of cityscapes, uh, and built a whole video without video. And then we put the source code and the data up online so people could remix and build their own versions. Uh, and another area I've played around with a lot is collaboration online. Um, this was one of the first project I did with Amazon's Mechanical Turk. We basically used the web service to ask people to draw sheep facing to the left, and I said, I'll pay you two cents for your creation. And I began cre collecting a lot of sheep. So here's a, a segment of the 10,000 sheep that I collected and put up on the website, The Sheep Market, where I took the sheep that I, I paid two cents for and sold them in plate blocks so people could begin collecting individual creations at $20 per block. Uh, which had a lot of social ramifications. Um, there's more information about the project online at thesheetmarket.com if you're interested in checking it out. And here's a bit of a background on Chris. Hi. 
Um, so I'm a filmmaker who went to art school, and uh, currently I'm working on securing financing for my first feature film that we're going to hopefully start shooting in the fall. Um, I started in music videos, and uh, this is a short little montage of some of my previous work in that medium. So that's where I started. I've more recently been moving into working on interactive projects with Aaron. I also do some of my own interactive um, installations. Uh, this is, I'm going to show you some clips from a project that I just finished called The Treachery of Sanctuary. It's an immersive environment project, right? Yeah. Interactive space interacts with people in the space based on technology and data. Did the, Tech. Did the power go? Can we need some help from? Technology. We have commissioned a project um, from Aaron and Chris oh, called. Okay. Here we go. So it's this okay. is a, it's a large tree. scale interactive triptych. It uses three Kinect sensors and three projectors. Um, the three panels represent the process of creative conception. So it's sort of a work about the process of making creative works. The first panel, your body disintegrates into birds that connects capture your shadow, reproject them over your head. It seems like your shadow, but it's actually not. First panel is about um, the sort of the initial moment of creative conception that you feel. The second is uh, about the critical response. It's representative of uh, your own self-doubt, uh, outside critical forces, or the impossibilities of uh, production. So it's, this is what it feels like to have your purest expression picked apart by a thousand angry beaks. And then the third panel, uh, you uh, can sprout your own gigantic wings, as you see in these pictures. So that's sort of representative of the idea, being able to transcend the critical response in the second panel um, and uh, become something larger ultimately than its original sort of transfiguration. So where does this lead us? Um, we're really interested in, in the platform of the web and interactive mediums, and we 
we look at history of other mediums, and they all started as um, uh, expressions of previous mediums, previous mediums before them. So at the beginning of cinema, uh, it, people looked at it as a way to mass distribute theater, even though obviously it grew into something much more than that. Uh, so film isn't the only technology to imitate the past. If we, um, if, we, if we look at radio, you know, programs were originally called reading books. The first cars were horseless carriages. The first computer interfaces were desktops. The first phone calls are actually called speaking telegrams. And virtually every medium starts by imitating the past media before its full potential is realized. So I think one of the things that we're most interested in is exploring the creative potential of the internet. And I, I think right now the internet's currently imitating dozens of prior mediums. We see it, you know, it's, it's doing film, it's doing television, it's doing news, it's doing radio, it's, do, you know, it's imitating and, and emulating all of these other mediums. But I think intrinsically there are some unique capabilities of the internet that have not been fully explored when we think about interactivity and when we think about participation and collaboration. So I think really what we're excited about is looking at how we can fuse different parameters of those other mediums and take advantage of, of really what the capabilities are of the internet. And I think we're still, gener uh, for, uh, on a creative, from a creative perspective, we're still at the pretty early stages of really exploring what this potential is. Uh, so this leads us to our first collaboration. We talked about it earlier this week. It was the Johnny Cash Project, where people were drawing individual frames of this music video and creating a dynamic, ever-changing database. So our next project after that was something called The Wilderness Downtown that we did with the band Arcade Fire. And, uh, oops, yeah. So it allowed you to enter your street address and build a story around where you grew up. It uses Google Street uh, View and Google Maps. You could write a postcard to your younger self. Uh, after Wilderness, we were interested in exploring the potential of a new technology called WebGL, which is basically hardware accelerated graphics in your web browser. So we built this project called Three Dreams of Black with Jack White, Nora Jones, Daniel Lupi, and Danger Mouse. Uh, it's basically a nonlinear interactive narrative um, where you can explore these different dreamlike landscapes. And in addition to that, people are also able to contribute by creating their own content. So here you see the gallery, and people are um, creating their own voxel-based contributions that become part of the video as well. And that uh, leads us to our latest project, which is the Exquisite Forest. Uh, which, which we also we... have on view here downstairs as a project, and we asked you to participate. Um, results are currently edited, so check in the website the next day. Sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to mention that again. So for, the, for those of you who didn't get to interact with the project, this is a quick clip of what it looks like online. Hopefully you'll get to check it out at exquisiteforest.com. But you can browse through all of the individual trees that are being made by different folks and see, see the different video clips uh, that people have contributed, or sorry, hand-drawn animations that people have contributed. Um, and the, the physical installation in the Tate, we didn't really get a chance to discuss uh, earlier in the week. But basically it's, it looks like this, and there's these infrared wands that people are able to use to browse through the trees. Uh, and see all the different content there in the museum. So it's kind of a, a great opportunity to see um, work by Mark Titchener, Olafur Elias, and Julian Opi, uh, and, and all of the individual people who have branched off and collaborated with them in that space. And there's also a space there to contribute, uh, not unlike we had here at DLD, where you can create and participate. So we want to show you just a few of the contributions. This is an animation by Dryden Goodwin. He started off this seed tree uh, with this man who's looking upwards. And then you'll see all the individual people who have contributed. Now you see it completely change as it passes through different perspectives and different people's contributions. Each second is a different person contributing. Maybe one more example of another great tree, and then sure. we open the floor. Or yeah, we th this is by Casey Reese. He basically he calls it transmission, and it's a nice juxtaposition because it's very formal. He's he's describing these patterns that people are. Um, that people are kind of emulating. It's a, similar to his processing style programming language, very formal, describing what types of lines to be drawing. And the very last one we'll mention is uh, this Rome wasn't built in one frame. And you see it, just people are just accumulating constantly and building out this city that keeps evolving and changing, and eventually a McDonald's sprouts up, and it, you know, it, it goes through its whole historical trajectory. Uh, and there's, there's lots of different types of animations that we see, you know, from formal studies of typography to playing with words and text to characters that are going through journeys. Um, it's all different types of journeys. And I think really this project was an experiment for us to see 
you know, how, how will people how will people deal with more open parameters and how will self-organization take place uh, and what types of experimentation can, can be occurring in different frameworks with friends and with anonymous people and everyone else. Aaron, Chris, thank you so much for the insight um, and for coming your insight in the creative use of the web and crowdsourcing process using existing technologies and I think we will see more of these projects in the future with arts.